eleven fifteen. Okay, so I think we can get started. So good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to the Dream Catchers Career Awareness Session today. We'll be talking about the corporate law. Uh, let me first introduce myself. I am Surbi Surbi Kumar, and I am the founder of the firm, the Dream Catchers. Let me also start with telling you a little bit about the Dream Catchers. We are an education consulting firm with a mission to assist students in realizing their dream of obtaining quality and best fit education. And you would wonder, how do we do that? So as you would agree for class 9th and 10th students, the immediate need is to select the right stream, the right subject combination. And for grade 11th and 12th, it's primarily the right course and the college selection. So what do we do? We start with something called as a psychometric assessment, which assesses the student's aptitude, personality, and interest. On the basis of this aptitude, personality, and interest, a career fitment report gets generated. So that's our starting point or more of a quantitative lens. Uh, after that, we start with the individualized and personalized counseling with the student, also including parents in the conversation. On the basis of this qualitative assessment and the quantitative assessment, we undertake a detailed action plan as needed for the student and also provide them information around different career pathways, kind of answering their career query at that point of time. We also provide our services in the higher education admission guidance space and uh, we cover colleges in India as well as overseas. Uh, in terms of services, we provide profile assessment and building, the country and course shortlisting, best fit college mapping, guidance on letter of recommendation, statement of purpose, essay prompts, uh, guidance on scholarship, preparing you for interviews if that's something which is needed in the entrance process itself, and visa guidance if any of you are thinking of studying abroad. With that, let me just talk about the lineup of our session today. So we'll talk about corporate law. We'll start with the career overview. We'll briefly talk about the roles and responsibilities, skills and competencies needed, subject combinations, or rather the ideal subject combinations, supportive curricular activities, common college pathways to get into this career, top colleges in India and across the globe, top recruiters in India and across the globe, Keep in mind that this section will just be an overview. So we will not dive deeper into the details, but our goal is to just furnish you with some information so that you can take the research ahead from your end. And if you need any kind of hand holding or help, we are there to help you. The highlight of our session today is the fireside chat with Mr. Vivek Sadale, who is an established law professional. We'll also keep aside some time for Q&A towards the end. So I would encourage you all, if you want to take the best out of this session, keep asking questions. And for uh, what you can do, you can just keep posting your questions in the chat or Q&A box. And once we start with the fireside chat, depending upon the time we have in hand, we'll try to take few questions. Or during the fireside chat itself, I will try to club your questions with mine if I see that there is a scope of doing so, okay? But I'm pretty sure with the questions which we are going to ask Mr. Vivek, you'll get a lot of good insights, okay? Uh, okay, now I know it's a Sunday morning. Majority of you who are joining us today are students, but with just a handful of parents as well. So let's start with a warm-up quiz. Now you have come here to attend a session on corporate law. And I know you might be familiar that LLB is one of the degree which is needed. So do you know what does LLB stands for? So just keep posting your response in the chat box and I'll pick up from there. Is it legum baccalaureus, legal baccalaureus or law bachelor? Mm -hmm. I can see some responses. Okay. Okay, I'll wait for a few more seconds. <laughs> what I can see, majority of you, you are thinking it's legal baccalaureus, but no, the right answer is A. Okay, so I hope now you're well awake. So let's start with the session. Okay, in terms of the basics around corporate law, what exactly is corporate law? It's a legal field that deals with the legal issues relating to owning creating, managing, as well as operating entities. 
The broad functions revolves around providing legal counsel, verifying decisions of the business from a legality standpoint, ensuring legal compliance of a business entity. What are the broad domains? Private equity, investment banking, capital markets, mergers and acquisitions, taxation, intellectual property, venture capital, and few others. Don't worry if these sounds like very heavy words to you as of now. Gradually, you will get more clarity around it. Okay. Now, in terms of broad roles and responsibilities, yes, there is a lot of documentation required. So legal documents drafting, mergers and acquisitions, involving in the corporate governance, uh, doing a lot of compliance work, again, from a legal angle, dispute resolution from an entity uh, standpoint, and uh, roles and responsibilities around the securities and financial aspect of the company. In terms of skills and competencies needed, uh, of course, legal knowledge and expertise is a non-negotiable there, right? You would be an expert or considered to be a legal expert in, uh, in this field, right? Ethical judgment and professionalism, being aware about the business in which that corporate entity is operating, having financial acumen, especially if you are helping in the securities and financing angle as such, having great communication skills, having eye for detail, being analytical, and being very good in researching, having good people skills, right? You have to deal with a lot of stakeholders, right? So you should be uh, able to kind of like get your point across and still not burn the bridge, right? Okay. Perseverance, creativity, negotiation skills, very important. And being high on emotional intelligence will take you long places there. Ideal subjects to study, again, keep in mind that law as a career is a neutral stream. So you can come from any stream and pursue this career. Here we are just trying to give you some insights around what could be some good subjects to study during your high school years, which can like really give you some kind of foundational skills or foundational knowledge for this career. Psychology, history of political science, sociology, economics. Now, when we talk about extracurricular activities, Again, don't see it from the lens of being mandatory activities. It's just that it will build your reasoning skills, your verbal skills or attitude, which is really very much needed in this career. So reading literatures and journals, participating in academic writing or research papers on different issues uh, across the globe, right? Debating and these days schools offer a platform for model United Nations, if possible, participating in that too, okay? Now, again, I have another quiz because I mentioned something called a psychometric assessment. So I just want to see how many of you are aware about it, what the psychometric assessment is. And if not, definitely there are means to get a better understanding of it. But what do you think about this statement? Is it true or is it false? Does these assessments, are these like structured assessments which ensure an unbiased evaluation of a student's aptitude, personality and interest or not? Mm hmm. Okay, I am seeing few responses. Come on, please input your responses fast. Okay, it seems majority of you understand it. Yes, that is correct. It's a correct statement. Now, with that, I also wanted to mention around when we talk about corporate law, what kind of aptitude can serve you better? So being high on reasoning and verbal aptitude is something which will help you thrive in this career and again there are ways and means to build this aptitude as well but if your aptitude on numerical and me mechanical and spatial is between low to medium that should be okay but you should be focusing on verbal and reasoning making it better and better okay now in terms of common entry pathways again as i mentioned it's a stream neutral career you can come from any stream and start your pathway uh, in this career if you're inclined towards it so these days, even from an LLB standpoint, there are a lot of flavors which are offered in terms of courses. So you can take BA LLB, BSc LLB. Again, like in BSc LLB, you might study few subjects of science and then definitely all the legal subjects in the uh, few years as such. BCom LLB, commerce specific subjects. BBA, someone who is inclined towards maybe like management and 
legal they can pursue this course and you can take any bachelor course or maybe even studying political science and international affairs but in this area then you will have to take llb uh, after that right you can also uh, go ahead and do your llm right maybe you can start working and then plan to do it but one mandatory step is that to start practicing law specifically in india you will have to take all india bar examination uh, from bar council of india now you can start your career from an entry level job as a junior law professional and these days you do, don't have to just just think about that only judiciary and litigation is one of the options right there are a lot of options so if you can see here law firms right legal consulting firms or management consulting firms which have a legal practice as such definitely we are going to talk about corporate law and we have mr vivek here today right so they are in house legal counsel team right even the defense departments and government policy think tanks academia always there there are definitely legal processing outsourcing firms who also take services of lawyers as such media and journalism too okay with that let's just see if any of you if you are considering studying abroad uh, for law courses first keep in mind like you should study law in the country where you would want to primarily make your career having said that if you do it from outside of india and if you want to come back to india and practice then you should take law courses only from those colleges which are kind of authorized by bar council of india okay and then you will again have to give bar uh, the all india bar examination if you want to study say in uk and come back to india you can do so but you will have to clear the bar council of india examination as well now again there are uh, if we talk about uk and australia and i have just put across these three countries because they are very popular when it comes to uh law uh, education and if someone is considering studying abroad so these are different again flavors uh, as such as you can see australia also offers something similar to what india has us is very different us doesn't have any formalized undergraduate law program so you have to take a bachelor's degree then you have to give lsat there and then after giving lsat you will have to go to a law school where you will study it as a post graduate program or which is called as juris doctor then you'll have to give the bar examination there to be certified to practice law okay now in in terms of colleges in india definitely there are lot of good law colleges and i have just provided a few uh, and de definitely this is not a comprehensive list so national law school uh, bangalore nlu delhi nalsar hyderabad one of the good private universities like jindal uh, global law school ils pune to name a few in us stanford yale university of chicago harvard again to name a few uk oxford cambridge ucl lsc australia all g8 colleges in australia offer law programs and again these are some of the top ones which has good law programs okay uh, again in terms of recruiters as uh, i mentioned in the earlier slide that you can really uh, join multiple kind of uh, firms right so ranging from law firms to corporates to even academia and legal management consulting firms as such right so you can see few names which i have mentioned here and even like uh, sports law specialization companies as well so i hope this gives you all some understanding of how you can make your career in this field right with that i would like to move on to the uh, highlight of our session today which is our fireside chat with uh, mr vivek sadale and somehow i'm just trying to enable the audio and video just give me a second uh what's happening there just allow me a second uh sorry Okay, wait. Let me do something. Yeah, now it should be working. Uh, Mr. Vivek, can you hear me? Can you see me? I have enabled audio and video for you. 
So yeah, Mr. Vivek, you might have to check at your end. I received yeah. thumbs up. Can can uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you well. Can you hear me? Okay, fine. I can hear you well as well. Good morning. Okay, great. So yeah, these technical glitches are part of our live session. How much so ever we do the testing, but yeah, glad we figured it out. Okay, so I would just start with a brief intro of uh, Mr. Vivek. Uh, he holds more than two and a half decades of hands-on experience in corporate legal, m a intellectual property right, employment law, corporate secretarial, corporate governance, management accounting, with an exposure to finance and treasury functions with repeated Indian and multilateral organizations. And it also includes he founding a full-service law firm, Legalogic. He has contributed various articles in leading professional journals, newspapers and published at national and international conventions and he's also a visiting faculty at various business schools professional institutions as well as law colleges so again very happy to have you here mr vivek you to be and you're doing a great job thanks for taking this opportunity to introduce corporate law it's a great topic for uh, aspiring uh, lawyers thank you my pleasure. And uh, as I will always say to all my students, uh, it is important to be aware about the career, listening to the authentic side of a career instead of like just doing some Google research. So this is your opportunity to make best use of this session. So having said that, without further ado, let's dive into the fireside chat. Are you ready, Mr. Vivek? Could you please be looking forward okay. to it? Okay, so here goes my first question. What inspired you to pursue a career in the field of legal services? Actually, I started as management accountant. I passed uh, management accountancy along with uh, my BCom. And okay. then uh, obviously what next, it was early in my career. I said, let's do company secretary. I completed that as well really quickly. And then I came to Pune in 97, November of 97 and enrolled at ILS, completed law. So it was not first choice, the law, it just happened gradually. But then I started to love law as uh, the career started to blossom. Okay, okay. So it was a happy accident for you. Absolutely, yes. Nice. Okay, so uh, tell us more about your career, career journey. And we would be interested to know in greater detail around your corporate role at Persistent Systems, where you were heading their legal and investor relations and company secretary department for a pretty long time. Uh, so I, I had a couple of stints with uh, Kirloskar and uh, Siemens and Bombay Dying before I joined Persistent. So these were smaller stints. They were in legal and non-legal uh, field, management accounting field. When I came to uh, Kirloskar uh, in Pune in 97, that time I had a choice of picking either finance team or the legal team. But as yes. things moved, I thought that my career growth would be faster if I picked up the legal and the compliance aspect of it, which I did, and I never looked back. Persistent happened to me in uh, the year 2000, first and 2000 to be precise, the new uh, millennium as they called at that point in time. And mm -hmm. uh, the the company was extremely ethical. Anand, Dada, both as the co-founders, uh, really instilled a lot of values, ethics, uh, work ethics as well, in terms of how we looked at it. When I joined, we were 100 people. Uh, I spent close to 13 and a half years with persistent, and I'll tell you what I all did. But in that 13 and a half years, the company moved from 100 people to 8,000 uh, odd people company from a 3 wow. mil to 300 mil company. Uh, mm -hmm. Company made, uh, you know, investments, the company took investments actually from VCs, Intel invested in uh, persistent, we did ESOPs, 
We did global expansion. We did IPO and I was the point person for that IPO for persistent. So all in all, it was like deep work that I could do. And the best part of uh, my stint at persistent was I was able to create these three functions that I, uh, you know, continued to lead uh, till I left uh, my persistent stint. Uh, this was about company secretary. I was the company secretary at persistent. I was the legal head of persistent. And I also started to do investor relations. But what helped was as you, as I joined this company at a fairly uh, early stage of the company, as well as my career, there was no baggage that I carried. Uh, there was just no baggage. I was able to set the whole department uh, at persistence. And that gave me a great learning in terms of what does it take to create something hands on uh, from ground up. And that's what helped us when we created Legal Logic, I guess. So the journey has been very fulfilling overall, Surbi. Uh, yes. It also has moved, if you look at year 2000, how India was and the India of today is very different and extremely vibrant. And the opportunities that it presents today for law students are far too many as uh, I started my career. And I'm going to talk uh, talk as you you know ask me questions about what those opportunities are. But then you, I, I'm one of the person who is uh, you know fortunate to do both the corporate job, which is mm -hmm. uh, what I did at Persistent predominantly, and now mm -hmm. uh, running a law firm, uh, Legal Logic. In both places, what I particularly practice is corporate law, while we have other practice areas as well as Legal Logic. But uh, our whole focus is corporate law. That's what excites us, and that's what is uh, you know something that we really thrive on. Great. I think you have a very interesting journey, and I'm sure with the questions which are here to follow, uh, students out here are going to get a lot of insights specifically into corporate law itself. So with that, help us understand what is kind of like a day to day day or like a week looks like for a corporate lawyer yeah i mean uh, uh, looks to be the amount of opportunities that uh, today corporate field has and therefore corporate law is uh, sky's the limit as i call it uh, mm -hmm. my day is my day starts really really early and ends really really late so it's a stretched day and stretched week all the time uh, mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, the students would be, uh, you know, should be well aware is that in any profession that you want to excel, uh, the time that you spend to learn and then uh, apply that to your uh, profession, what you do is going to be enormous. So, you know, the amount of time that one spends as a lawyer is far too much. Like you said, in your early part, attention to details is one of the several attributes that you need to become a good lawyer and lawyer of repute and that takes a lot of time on the day that you essentially uh, you know spend in office thinking about your work thinking about your client and your mind doesn't stop that's one of the things that you have to adapt to in terms of looking at this but it is very exciting as well remember that this is a live thing that you're solving the problem the real life problem so think yes. about the MA, just as an example, Surbi. Uh, Flipkart got acquired by Walmart, uh, say about five, six years back. Now, imagine that you have the ability to do that particular deal, which was the largest MA deal in India at that point in time. Obviously, mm -hmm. India is doing larger deals as we speak today. But when you get opportunity to look at something like that or when we did ip of persistence and when you get to do some of these things and today persistence market cap is close to about sixty thousand crore indian rupees then you yes. you believe that you created something you contributed to something so the day is busy the day is uh, involved the day is uh, all the time on the emails phone calls meetings talking to teams talking to partners strategizing what is a good way of negotiating a particular deal how do you sort of navigate uh, in all of these things so the time flies uh, on a daily basis on a weekly basis on a monthly basis 
Okay, great. Uh, definitely, it's a demanding career, and uh, I think students should be prepared. And that is also true for uh, any of the career that your starting years are, where you will have to put in a lot of effort for sure. And if you want to create something of a repute, as you said, like you will also have to be always involved in what is happening around you kind of thing right so uh mr vivek one thing which would help the student out here is that from an entry level corporate lawyer right what would be their uh broad roles and responsibilities once they are part of a like a general counsel team or a legal counsel team or even joining a uh independent law firm sure and uh i think it's important to uh note for young students and those who are uh, just passing out from the college or during the college, a lot of people come and do internship, is to be focused. I think one of the things that we like at Legal Logic is to see those who have a focused approach towards doing things. We don't like people doing too many things simultaneously. These days, we find that people are, uh, you know, trying to do at least three or four things simultaneously. Uh, you know, someone's doing uh, some esoteric course and what have you. And we believe that, you know, at any given point in time, you can only do one or two things uh, with focus. Okay. That's the most critical aspect of it. So when, as you enter a uh, office, uh, be it a company like Persistent or be it a law firm like Legal Logic you will always have opportunities of plenty. You have to pick your choice, what interests you. And at early age, I won't be deciding for myself as to, you know, I'm only going to do m and I'm only going to do employment law, I'm only going to do IPR. I would actually explore, dip into multiple of these things, and then pick within the corporate law which aspect of corporate law I can specialize in. Remember, the, you, uh, you had a very nice slide in terms of the opportunities that it has. And in each of those areas, say, for example, you said venture capital. If you are advising your clients on venture investment or you are part of a venture capital legal team, you can specialize entire of your life in that. That's mm -hmm. the opportunity that we're talking about. Remember, India is talking about $100 billion of foreign direct investment. And this is just foreign direct investment. The, the domestic money that you see being, uh, uh, you know, moving hands, the IPOs that you see today, the opportunity is a plenty. But if you're focused, then at an early age, you specialize into one thing and then start to expand as what we call as land and expand is the mantra you don't okay. want to kind of you know try and do too many things simultaneously if you focus picking one battle at a time and over a period of time you then build your career that's a better approach remember uh, you know you have 40 to 45 years of meaningful career if you are in law field because you know uh, you're going to have best job you will have uh, you know you may go to court you may do some of those things, but you still have the ability to do 40 years. And you don't want to do any harakiri in the beginning by doing trying to do too many things simultaneously. Uh, you can invest and then reap returns over a period of time. This profession is what I call as not of instant gratification, it is later gratification. The yes. more patient you are with yourself, you have a better outcome in the long run. And remember that you know you can win a few matches. Uh, like uh, an IPL uh, quickly, but then over a period of time, you realize that, you know, it's a marathon and not just a 100 meter sprint. So, you know, the focus is what I would call pick one at a time and then expand. That's the mantra. Great. Thank you so much, Mr. Vivek. Uh, that was very, very insightful. Uh, I would want to remind uh, our students out here, please keep posting your questions. I'll definitely pick it up. I can see two questions already which are there but uh, we'll try to take a few in the end just keep posting whatever you would want to ask mr vivek from a corporate law profession standpoint okay now let's move on to my next question so though in the earlier slide or during the overview session i did cover what are the educational pathways and 
which are like kind of common ones but uh, i would want to understand and i think this can help uh, our students out here that what do you think are the best aligned educational pathway even in terms of additional courses as well which students should consider if they are planning for a career in like legal services as a broad domain and corporate law specifically sure i mean uh, my suggestion is that you know the top law colleges is something that you should aim for in india outside of india clearly and there is a clat which is a common uh, law admission test which is uh, you know entrance for getting into most of these colleges national law schools and what have you uh, having done that because you know though that that's the premier uh, college that we talking about or it could be private college it could be the college that i went to as ils uh, in pune or what have you you can try and do what we call as company secretary course which is very aligned to the law course when you are picking corporate law as the subject remember what law curriculum in india teaches is the procedural law and what company secretary course teaches is the practice part of it practical law okay both of this combination is lethal when you go and do your work that could be one way of looking at it the second also the opportunity that exists today surbhi is in relation to economics and i'm glad that you put that as part of you know the prep that uh, the students could have while they're pursuing law and law and economics also is a very lethal combination and as we go forward as the machine learning comes into play as ai comes into play remember the creativity with which you get into anything which will survive and will stand test law is one of the profession uh, and combined it with uh, economics could also provide you with an edge because you know the policy making which is one of the other thing that surbhi has mentioned students in the uh, in her slides that government policy making is also one of the very critical area that's going to shape up uh, and this is not just india specific or a country specific this is global what we are talking about and therefore knowing economics and studying economics could also benefit you so my uh, my suggestion is twofold one is company secretary course in india uh and the second is the economics if you're looking at global uh economics could also be very very useful some people also do mbas but then that's a digression because you're getting into a management consulting field and not only specific to corporate law so if you're building a corporate law my picks would be uh, company secretary and then economics okay thank you so i think uh, you also kind of covered in terms of some specific subjects and i would like to take one question here which is from supriya she is asking that um, i want to make a career in law but i do not like history and civics so should i still pursue that's what her question is so sure. uh, you know the uh, history and civics is not something that will directly impact your law uh, law uh, as a career but having said that let me give you an example we were doing a joint venture with a french company and french like indian have a peculiar way in which they conduct themselves and that's because of their history and the history and you know i, I was not a great history student but now i i read a lot about history uh, online offline books and what not simply because when i'm going and doing a deal with a japanese company when i'm going and doing a deal with an american company what they react is because of their history and if you know a little bit of it not deeper into it right i mean not the intricate part of it but just the fact as to why a human behaves in the manner it he or she behaves that's a great way of learning history and as you travel and as you you all young uh, folks are going to be global citizens you will travel a lot you possibly have more miles than your parents uh, even now uh, and you will find that that opportunity to learn history not by books but by just talking to by traveling by reading is good enough as a law student remember as a law student i didn't want to miss this and i'm bringing it up 
glad that you brought it uh, uh, this question supriya is the fact that you want to be a 360 degree personality a lawyer what we call as legal counsel it's a counsel is the word you actually are counseling your client you're counseling your management about what about what is the right thing to do and it's not only relates to law provision but it is about the 360 degree view that you take of a particular thing and then constitute your opinion remember when a new law comes into play like data privacy is a big thing right now or any intellectual property or ai laws which are shaping up they are all reflection of what is happening in the society and what happens in the society is reflection of you and me conducting ourselves in the society and therefore it's important to keep your eyes and ears open history and civics and geography is integral part of our uh, you know our being in this world and you ought to know some bit of it and we don't want to get into what happened in 1860 which war happened no one cares about it but what transpired the human generation after that war think about the uh, you know hiroshima uh, hiroshima nagasaki uh, the bomb that uh, the atomic bomb that fell and what actually triggered in japan what actually changed the landscape of the world is very important to know when you are as a world citizen trying to do corporate transactions which are going to be cross border in that sense so only to that extent you need to know but as a data point if you are a 360 degree and it happens over a period of time remember that you know these are all experiences that you learn life teaches you a lot of these things you will learn over a period of time if you keep unbiased mind and if you have very cute curiosity is one of the trait that you generate you will be doing good uh, don't worry about uh, you not liking history i did not like it as well okay i hope supriya that answers your question okay thank you mr vivek let me move on to the next one which is uh, can you throw some light on the career path of a corporate lawyer what are the opportunities for growth and invest and advancement in this profession and maybe again from like an independent law firm being an independent law firm or being in a corporate legal counsel team itself and so be you were kind enough to actually lay out uh, a broad spectrum of areas in which uh, a young lawyer can uh, sort of make his or her career and the opportunities are up team the opportunities are expanding and they will continue to expand uh, remember uh, there is a company like persistent where you can be part of the general counsel uh, and the uh, the gc team what we call as a legal team you could be part of a law firm like legal logic uh, and build your career uh, you could be a journalist law journalism is taking a big big shape and if you go to money control uh, you look at any of the pink newspapers uh, the journalism is a huge opportunity for everyone uh, then there is something what you said as a policy making uh the lot of good talent required in the policy making drafting uh those statute those are important things that you uh, look at then you have uh, you know uh, 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 lpos which is legal processing outfits uh those are going to get consumed by ai to a large extent so you know i'm not putting that as a uh, you know huge career opportunities over a long period of time but in the short period that could be so the opportunities are empty you need to look at it in two or three different dimensions one is you can practice the profession which is what we are doing as law firm or you could be in the corporate world as company right those are two broad spectrum then the other thing to look at is that you could be as a lawyer a non litigation practitioner like mm-hmm. i am or you could go in the litigation litigation is a different world altogether we are not talking about litigation today but then you have as a lawyer opportunity to litigate that is the court practice you've heard tarikh pe tarikh tarikh pe tarikh uh, you know all those uh, uh, situations uh, for you to avoid that right the courts are busy our job as a corporate lawyer is to avoid litigation and what are you doing and what are you helping the society what are you helping is of trying to ease of doing business and making sure that the 
coal both sides you know uh, both sides don't go to coal and your job is to ensure that the transaction goes seamless without going to coal and that's what is important i believe for you to look at so there are two things one is corporate and uh, a law firm or policy making that's the three and the journalism four or teaching is another uh, way of looking at it five things for you to look at and then a litigation and non litigation if you think in that parameter and you know uh, put yourself thinking as to what would be of interest to you and as i said don't uh, make up your mind even before you are starting because there is so much to explore after having explored you could pick one out of all of these things so you are spoiled for choice students and you will have a, a fulfilling career as the india continues to grow and the world continues to come closer and closer okay thank you for that and i do see couple of more questions uh, ishita you have a question around the subjects and uh, her question is like she's interested in knowing what were the specific subjects which you studied in your grade 11 <laughs> okay so the 11th standard was commerce for me uh, so you know it was accounting bookkeeping commerce uh, and so on so forth but if you were to look at uh, the 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 good question is what do you study in the first year of law and it's mostly to do with uh, what we call as basics of what law is like the contract you and me make any contract that you make comes from a contract act and then there are you slowly graduate to situations which are more complex where you then go and study the civil uh, code the criminal code uh, various different constitutional laws environmental laws and things like that but it is a gradual process it's a five year course uh, if you start after 12th standard and it's such a beautifully structured one that we see as people come to intern with us in third year and fourth year that they are already matured and they are worldly wise in terms of what it takes so the curriculum is built in a way where it starts slow in terms of building your legal acumen and then moving into a different situation but in 11th standard i didn't take law uh, and you know 11th and 12th is not actually where you take law it is a common uh, you know you could pick up art science whatever stream that you pick up i chose commerce and you know i studied everything other than law actually okay great i hope ishita that answers your question rashi i do see your question which is specifically related to a situation where you study abroad and then come back here i'll i'll park that question for a while let me first take a few more questions which will give more insight into the professional journey here and then we'll see if we have time we'll try to cover it as well so with that let me move on to the next one which is uh, in your experience what are some of the most challenging aspects uh, of being in legal services and particularly in corporate law and how one can overcome those challenges and again through our webinars we try to give students insights around both the rewards which we would be my next question and also the challenge because they kind of know what they are getting into and most importantly if they want to build a profession there then they prepare themselves well so from that angle this question is being asked no absolutely so be i think that's an important one and remember that while uh, you know grass is always greener on the other side students as you have uh, heard this uh, cliche uh, it's important to know that the legal profession requires you to spend a lot of time in the office uh, it's not something if you're looking at 9 to 5 job that's not for you that's not what's going to the client can call you at 5 because it's really urgent and you ought to respond to that if you want to remain valid in so you know it requires a lot of tenacity a lot of hard work a lot of investment of time and effort getting into mm -hmm. it that's one the second is that it's a later gratification and remember think about it if your kith and kin is not well and you know uh, gets into a real situation where you know there is a heart problem or what have you who do you go to you go to a specialist you go to someone who has experience you won't let your kith and kin be handled by someone who is a rookie 
And it's the same thing in the law profession as well. You know, when a client comes and says, hey, I want to do a 100 mil uh, M&A deal. Why would he come and talk to someone who's rookie, who's not experienced enough? But that rookie can actually help someone who's experienced. And that's how you grow. So the second important thing is that it's not an early gratification. It's a later gratification and you should be prepared for it. How much early you want to pull it, it is up to you in terms of the effort that you put in to actually understand the overall uh, you know, nuances of the uh, profession. And the third important thing is that you, know, you will have a lot of uh, situations where you could possibly make fast bucks, but you, know, you need to be careful because your reputation is what you actually are uh, uh, building overall. And as you build your reputation as a clean, ethical, sound lawyer, uh, people will keep coming back to you. One small mistake, and then your whole reputation is ruined. And therefore, it's important to understand that while all this looks glamorous, but it, 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 it also comes with a very, very important trait of being patient with yourself and not look at something which is uh, early gratification. This is what I would talk about in terms of the uh, in terms of the challenges that you would essentially look at, and obviously, as you as you get into the profession, the 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 fact that there will be competition uh, within your own clan is something that you need to be looking at. But that's true for all professions, so I won't call that as an outstanding one. But remember that you know how much you invest time in terms of uh, building your own skills, reading is important and things like that. Uh, and that tenacity will determine how far you go and how quickly you arrive on the field. Great, thank you. And uh, I do see more questions as well in the chat. Uh, Rashi, I think uh, this one Sir has already covered, which is in terms of competitive exams. So in case if you're planning to pursue your undergraduate law degree in India, you will have to give CLAT or CLAT, which is the law entrance examination. Plus, there are other uh, exams as well, which are kind of held by private colleges. So that was something which uh, was the question and uh, Sir has actually answered that earlier too. Uh, do we need maths for law? Uh, not necessarily, or CS? That's what she has asked. Maybe, sir, you would want to answer that. Yeah, actually, uh, again, like history, uh, maths is not something which is like an integral part of how you build yourself as a lawyer or a company secretary. But remember, again, you know, logic is what matters, and maths is nothing else but logic. So when you build anything, right, this uh, always you're building equations in your mind. If this were to change, what happens and things like that. So, un so you know, don't expect you to be an expert on math, but understanding uh, the overall mathematical situations in your mind as you solve problems is very, very important. Means, as a like I said, as a lawyer, unless you are a 360 degree, it's difficult to deliver to the expectations. So many lawyers say, "Hey, I don't know the Excel, and I don't, I can't manage Excel." You know, you, you, you're not going to make it big if you don't even know how to navigate uh, an Excel and, you know, learn through the numbers. Uh, there are a lot of what we call as areas where it touches law and finance, and you need to be in a position to marry both of those to provide the best solution. So would you need maths deep? No, of course not. You're not expected to solve trigonometry problems as you're doing uh, law and you're practicing law, but applying those logical solutions in your mind and providing solutions will be something that will be important. You can't completely ignore math. It may not be a mainstream topic for you, but it would be something that you will integrate as you provide solutions. So the answer is somewhere in the gray, neither yes, neither no, but it is something that I would continue to not ignore. Okay. Thank you. I hope, Rashi, that answers your question. So, Mr. Vivek, we did cover around the challenges. Now, uh, let's also talk about the rewards, right? And definitely, if it's possible, can you also throw some light on the financial rewards besides the other rewards? 
and uh, see one of the uh, the the beauty of this profession is that you know uh, you can practice it till the time you want it as you enter the profession the compensation varies from and depending on what you have done as internship what what do you actually bring how you are uh, articulating yourself you are looking at anywhere between 5 lakhs to 20 lakh rupees as starting compensation uh, that's the range in which it works 5 lakhs to 20 lakhs uh, at this point in time and it is uh, it is in the indian context that i'm talking about if you actually go outside of india and you've got, done your llm or you've done uh, uh, undergrad as well outside of india then obviously the numbers are uh, different but having said that the growth could be very fast and quick in terms of the monetary compensation in three to four years if you are focused and if you deliver the result your compensation will go dramatically up uh, it is all about what results you present and how you actually uh, learn the tricks of the trade quicker and people would end up making as a general counsel anywhere between at this point in time uh, a package which is uh, about a crore of rupees to three crore rupees to five crore rupees depending on what scale of organization that you are doing and in a law firm uh, the compensation would be uh, at a partner level anywhere between say 50 lakh rupees to uh, say about uh, seven crores or 10 crores depending on what kind of practice that you and it but remember uh, all of this is later gratification this is not immediate in the immediate thing you're looking at anywhere between 5 lakhs to 20 lakh rupees and can scale up it is all up to you 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 will be surprised to see the top lawyers who are appearing in supreme court what kind of fees they charge for consulting and for appearing it's mind boggling but that it comes because they have done all the hard work and the grind work to reach where they have reached. Okay. How about the non-financial rewards? I mean, so it's very, very satisfying as a profession. See, one of the, uh, see, this is called as a noble profession apart from, you know, doctors and teachers, simply because you are able to impact societal, uh, societal situations every single day every single day you are able to do that in multiple different ways so it's a very rewarding thing very satisfactory satisfactory to the fact that you are solving someone's problem you're closing one deal you are uh, providing a solution to uh, the the issues that come your way so it's a very very satisfying thing you get to you get invited to a lot of places to talk because you are worldly wise you are uh, recognized uh, across. You have a lot of pro bono situations, and you are on uh, various bodies who are uh, who are influencers in terms of policy making and decision making. So it's a it's a all in all a very satisfying uh, profession. Apart from monetary rewards, obviously they matter as you start your career. But at this point in time, say for uh, where I stand today, everything else than money matters and that is a great satisfaction that i get when i'm uh, sort of uh, being able to uh, provide solutions uh, on a every single day basis and then uh, you have other than your work different opportunities to represent and help on different platforms in the way you can impact society in a positive manner okay I think that's really wonderful. I covering both the financial and non-financial rewards. I think this gives students a realistic picture of obviously I would not deny money is important. So you should really know about it. But more than that, what other rewards are there? I think this will give you a correct picture. Now, uh, Mr. Okay, Vivek, can I just make one statement here that the uh, the five year course and when you do it from national law schools and premier schools is equivalent to the IITs and IIN at this point in time, both from the opportunity as well as from the compensation standpoint. So best of the minds are coming into the legal profession. Just as an example, if you see there is an Aditya Birla scholarship and you have a full page spread every year that comes in Times of India Economic Times, where, uh, you know, 
around 40 bright students, if I remember it right, are selected uh, to get that particular scholarship. 10 years back, it used to be all IITs and IIMs, engineers, doctors. Today, you will find half of the people who get that particular scholarship are lawyers. And that's the change that uh, India has seen in last 10 years in terms of the uh, quality input that comes. And remember that input is going to provide the output. And that's the reason why the profession is taking shape. So the best of the mind coming into the profession. And uh, that's where actually it is equal to what IIT and IIMs and therefore this five-year course is a super lethal uh, in terms of providing you with what it provides you. Absolutely. I think that's a great point which you made. Uh, in India, and especially like if you do it from premier colleges, it's like really worth it as well. And as you mentioned, scholarship is something. And besides Aditya Birla, there are like uh, other scholarships as well, which are being given to students who wants to pursue legal education here in India. And that's that's a detailed topic. Maybe for another day, we can cover that as well. But thanks for bringing that up. Uh, with that, I know we have a couple of minutes left. So I would want to ask uh, two important questions for sure. One is particularly like you have mentioned uh, about AI as well. And AI is the talk of the town, right? So I think it will be good for students to understand that how uh, these technological ad advancements, especially like generative AI and all, that can impact law as a profession, right? Do you think it can support lawyers or do you think like it may uh, take up jobs, maybe some redundant work? I don't know. But what's your take on that? I think, uh, you know, the clients, when they pay, Surbhi, they're going to be very clear that we don't want to pay for something which is uh, rudimentary work. They will pay top dollars for something which is a value add work. That's a given. And mm -hmm. what technology has done over a period of time, and AI is just one of the several things, is to have taken away the inefficiencies. No one yes. wants to pay for the inefficiencies. Yeah. Inefficiencies are being taken over by machines. Today, uh, you know, you personally don't need an assistant, and most of the offices won't have personal assistant because technology takes care of it. You can, you know, voice do most of things. You can, and you know, the kids, those who are there will, they, they, they're born with the phone in the hand, so they, they know how to operate all of this. The technology is only going to be an aid and not going to be your foe in that way. I'll give an example. If you look at the stock market in India students, you will find that there is a concept of electronic transfer of shares called as dematerialization, which is DMAT in short. When I started my career in 95, at that time, Physical sales was the norm. And in two years, the stock market said that we are going to do electronic, not physical. The amount of trading that used to happen, if you were to say that it was X, today it has gone as 5,000 X, just because technology took away the inefficiency and created this. At that point in time, a lot of people said, hey, you know, what's going to happen with my job? What's going to happen with everyone benefited out of it and i believe that you know the technology is only going to benefit not take away uh, things the jobs will keep moving no doubt about it and if you don't keep pace with it and if you don't embrace technology it's to your peril so you can't not do with technology you ought to embrace technology but then technology is your aid and not actually your foe is how i look at it and today at legal logic what we are doing to be is investing wherever there is an intersection between technology and law Okay, awesome. look at uh, look at data privacy, look at AI. There's so many nuances that is coming up. We have no idea as to what this AI is uh, in relation to copyright law. We have no idea in terms of how that's going to shape up. And that's the exciting part of it. And, you know, when you look at how you want to embrace it and how you want to use it to your advantage, I'm sure, you know, we all collectively can find our ways. And life is such where, when we are put to a challenge, you know, the best comes out of it. That's the way I look at it. Okay. Thank you. I know we are uh, kind of reaching towards 1230, but would it be okay if we extend the session by another 
10 minutes or so because I want to cover one or two questions from my end. Plus, there are a lot of questions from the students as well. And I would want that we, if we are able to answer those, we should be able to. So will that work for you, Mr. Vivek? Yeah, absolutely. So we keep going. Okay. And I hope like all the attendees, it might work for you as well. So if you can stay on for another 10 minutes or so, you will get other insights as well. Okay, so uh, next question is looking ahead, what trends or developments or opportunities do you foresee shaping the landscape of corporate law in the coming years? And how can young professionals or students prepare for them? What would be your advice there? I think the most critical thing of all of this is that the world is really, really coming close. Today, if you were to look at uh, from India, you go anywhere, it's just 24 hours or less than that, you can reach any part of this world. It is not daunting, it is not intimidating at all. Uh, earlier, when I started my career, it used to be, you know, even going from one state to another, it used to be with a lot of planning and things like that. Technology has brought everything together. Now, what it means is that the country specific law is what the world goes with so if you are in india indian laws apply if you are in the us us laws apply if you are in singapore singapore laws apply which will not change for sure but what india does with singapore and what india does with us and vice versa is fast going to continue to come together and then there is a concept of what we call as an international law which is an emerging thing as to how do you deal with situations where, uh, you know, a company in one country contracting with a company in another country, and then they are looking at their disputes to be settled in a third country. Like Singapore is a great example where they go and do what we call as an arbitration, mediation, where you solve the dispute without going to court through a legal process. Those are situations Surbi, I believe, will keep coming and making this closer. The second important thing is the profession in uh, India as the legal profession is close to foreign law firms. They can't operate in India. And, you know, last about 18 months, the talk started that we should open up. And there is a slow but steady progress there. And that's another opportunity that I see that, you know, the world's coming closer. That And it, uh, what it means is that Indian lawyers can go and operate outside of uh, India as well. It's not just restricted to India and see the opportunity. India is huge opportunity. And now the world becomes the opportunity uh, in the reciprocal situation. So say, for example, if the Indian lawyers are allowed to operate in Canada and vice versa, then, you know, you have Canada as a market to tap. And remember, we are one sixth of the world in population. So think about the opportunity that it can get created. So what, what, you know, if, if I were the student, I would be really elated to the fact that the world is my market and not India only. And therefore, where you have an opportunity, try and do global studies. Don't restrict and don't box yourself into a particular geography. Uh, as you grow and you have, like I said, 40, 45 years of, of professional career after your studies in front of you, the uh, this is only going to change where you will have multiple different careers uh, in the same 40 years, right? I mean, it's going to change dramatically. And what it will help prepare you is to be looking at global situation, international situation, and not just a geography specific situation. That's the opportunity that I believe. And, you know, if you extrapolate this, the opportunity is good. Okay. Thank you so much for that. And I think this might be a good time to ask the question, which was uh, particularly asked by Ishita. Uh, she had a question in case a student aspires to go out to pursue LLM, particularly in a specialized field such as immigration. Will its applicability hold value in India if I want to settle in India and want to continue my practice here as US and Indian laws will be different? So what's your take on that? Yeah, I see that you are absolutely right. Uh, you know, the US laws and India laws are different. But let me give you a specific example of this immigration. Immigration is 
a specialized law field and when you pick it up you ought to have license to practice in say us if you are practicing us immigration law but what's happening is and i know multiple such firms very good and very large firms who have offices in new york and offices in mumbai and they seamlessly provide services so most of the it company who use this h1 and l1 visas uh, which are work visas to operate in the us and multiple different country would essentially operate in india to process the volume and in the us you essentially have the ability to sign and submit and you know make that application valid now think about it and this is something that all students should be very carefully uh, trying to inculcate is to say that you know what i studied at harvard i have few friends who are us native and i am india native so i'll come back but then we still will work together how the person who is in the us practices what he is allowed to and you coming back into india having studied international law you continue to play the role but you want to be in india and then create partnership between this india and the us and seamlessly work so you have to be creative and you can still make things work for what you studied outside what you studied outside is one the connections that you make the network that you make and utilizing that network effectively could be another important thing from your standpoint remember that you don't need to get boxed because you are india licensed attorney and someone is the us licensed attorney you could also be us licensed attorney but you want to come back to india there are creative ways in which you could look at it i have seen this work in immigration i have seen this work in ipr multiple folks who do patent uh, practice or you know trademark practice intellectual property practice or even mn a practice ipo and all that have these associations which are essentially working 24 by 7 and work globally in that way so the way to look at is that if you do your llm outside of india or any legal study outside of india want to come back in india utilize the network that you create utilize the learning that you have outside of india bring those best practices and you will see that you will flourish and have best best of both worlds though you are situated in india you could still be in india and look at global as a situation and that is exactly what i was talking about world's coming closer broaden your horizon broaden your thought process keep open mind and you will reap so much benefit because the 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 opportunities are immense great thank you so much i hope ishita you got uh, answer to your question i know rashi i have been holding you up for so long but i'll ask your questions now so she has a question for you uh, sir do we work in companies or at courts after doing llb i mean the choice is yours in terms of looking at what attracts you obviously flashy offices etc etc uh, good lunches good oh, that's one aspect of it what is your calling is something that you should try and do as an intern in while you're doing your law remember law uh, courses uh, if you are not in the national law school are mostly non residential which means that uh, you have most part of your day at your disposal so many people after 2 uh, years start their internship while you do internship try and do in various areas try and do both with practicing lawyers practicing firms and in corporate and then think for yourself what works what works for your friend may not work for you because your personality is different your aspirations are different so don't go with uh, the friend a because he or she is doing it in that manner think what's good for you and that's where you ought to be open to take feedback the feedback is important many a times what happens is that you know uh someone gives you feedback and you say hey you know what i don't really but that feedback is important from your growth standpoint and you have to constantly seek feedback uh to make sure what is your liking what you are doing and when you then collate all these experiences over two or three years then you will at least be in a position to say yes company works better than the law firm 
or vice versa and then you start and when you start you again think whether this is your right calling or you want to do a career shift both is possible but give yourself time be patient with yourself don't be too quick judgment like your uh, you know uh, uh, ott platforms one platform to another or your uh, you know ipl match uh, you have to give yourself time if you do that i'm sure you will do better and you will find answers to yourself uh, learn to take feedback learn to be patient with yourself that's the way to go about uh, finding what is your calling a company or law firm but whatever you do i can tell you uh, you know you will do uh, fairly well uh, because of everything else that i mentioned to you great thank you uh, i'll take one last question from rashi again and then uh, we'll we'll move on to our rapid fire i know we are much over time 10 minutes but let's see if we can still carry on for another couple of minutes so is cfa and law together good which career option it offers again i think from a legal services standpoint yeah. asking it rashi so rashi uh, you know the cfa is very different than law obviously no education goes away so you know both will come handy uh, though having said that you will have to pick after you do your law and cfa what you want to pursue in terms of uh, you know on the cfa side there is a different team there is a law which is a different team uh, very few people will be in a position to utilize both simultaneously those don't exist at this point in time in a practical world you'll have to pick one versus the other but having said that you know one doesn't take away the other in that way in 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 a way where you know the education never goes waste you will always uh, have a way in which you can utilize that to your uh, advantage but in reality both those are different very very different uh, uh, things okay great i think rashi you got answers to most of your question if you have something more which was not answered in this session feel free to send us a whatsapp message and we'll try to answer and also get some insights from mr vivek if possible okay so one last question from my side is uh, and i really want to cover that and i have been doing it in all different webinars itself what is the common myth or misconception about corporate law as a career as such i think uh, uh, even before that i think uh, the the fact that people see bollywood and hollywood movies and try and make uh, as to what the career is that's not what the real life is real life is very different as compared to what you see on screen so one is the fact that the law profession is not just about litigation it is turning out to be how do you not get into litigation and that's what the corporate law is so the myth is that uh, you know there is a lot of money uh, is not a myth uh, but the myth is that you can earn it without working hard is clearly a myth it's a lot of hard work that it will take for you to uh, 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 make money so uh, there are certain preconceived notions about the profession which you know people like you uh, the right talent is uh, making it go away and i'm hoping that you know all of that uh, happens in a in a quick manner so anyone who tells you that uh, you know this is a easy profession uh tell them that you know come and work uh, at legal logic and you will know what it is uh, in in that way but jokes apart uh, the myth about you know the law profession is only about litigation is not true uh, the myth about it's a easy way of uh, making good amount of money is not true uh, but it, the truth is that there is opportunity out there okay thank you so much for that uh, mr vivek and uh, i had other questions as well kind of to end on a lighter note but i'll just ask one of those it was meant to be a rapid fire but i'll just pick one which is uh, if you would not have been in a legal profession then alternatively what would you have pursued i don't know it's been long time that i'm doing this possibly i would have done uh, my uh, upsc um oh, okay. uh, i missed that out i didn't listen to my parents uh, they yeah. wanted me to think about it because at early age i cleared some of my exams but i told them that no 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 that's not uh, how it goes but now when i look back i possibly if 
uh, had an opportunity to do that, that would have been great. Okay. I would say then maybe it was a loss for the civil services as such, but definitely a gain for the legal profession. <laughs> With that, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Vivek, for joining us today and giving the realistic picture of this profession to all our students and a couple of parents had also joined. So uh, I hope this was an insightful session for all of you. And as I mentioned, if there were few questions which were there in your mind, you couldn't answer, please reach out. And if you think we could be of any help in terms of career guidance or career planning, please reach out to us. We will have this session posted on our YouTube channel as well. So uh, listen to it again, try to digest whatever was kind of provided as insights. So with that note, have a happy rest of Sunday and thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you, Subhi, and uh, you're doing a great job. This is an important thing for students, and I really, really appreciate uh, doing it. Students, thank you so much. I uh, hope you, uh, you you will dwell on what I said, and you know, if you, some of you make legal as your profession, that's my uh, overall outcome of this. Thank you so much. All the best. God bless. Thank you, thank you uh, so much. Uh... Mr. Vivek, I see a hand uh, got raised, which was from Aryan. So I'll I'll unmute uh, Aryan uh, if you want to ask. Oh, he lowered his hand. Maybe it was by mistake. Anyhow, thank you once again. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye for now.